Hi 104, this is your video for week three. We're concentrating on pages 20 through 24 and your quiz at the end of this week or your weekly grade will be page 24 Latin B. I want to talk to about pages 16 and 17 first. If you have your text, you can take a look at these. Otherwise, uh, you can listen to what I say and I will show these on the board at your class period as well, but it's just another way to think about your reading. And I put a couple examples here on the board. So your book starts to talk about intervals. We've talked about reading by letter name. We've talked about reading by motion, by step and skip up and down. Intervals is doing that same thing. If you take a look here at my first interval, I'm going from a space note to a space note. So we already have learned that as a skip. But what we're gonna find is that as our music gets harder, we're gonna have more than just steps and skips. So we start to call them intervals. Interval means the distance between two notes and the number of spaces and lines that you are covering. So yes, this is a skip, but I could also call it space, line, space. I'm encompassing three parts of that staff I could also call it a third. Line to space, we've been identifying as a step, but I'm moving from one line to one space. That's two parts of the staff I'm covering. So I could also call that an interval of two. The reason this is important because as our intervals start to get bigger, it's gonna be easier to identify them by name. Also, I want you to think about by look because we had same to same, meaning a skip or a third. Step was different, line to space or space to line. Here I've got a line to a line with an empty line. One, two, three, four, five. So this would be an interval of five. Why is that a good one to watch for? Because it's your hand span. So if I'm on my thumb and I see an interval of five, I'm going to flip up to finger five or vice versa. What would your interval be here? One, two, three, four. So I've got a line to a space, so they're different, but they're not neighbors like a step. The other thing I want you to notice is I wrote all of these as one note at a time. Those would be called melodic intervals. This one that I stacked on top of each other would be called a harmonic interval. It's just a way of letting our player or our listener who we're talking about the piece to know that melodic means those notes are being played one at a time. Harmonic means they're being played together. So as you continue to practice reading, this will be another way that we're watching for movement to help us with our hand. So your pieces that you have for this week, start on page 20. A short stroll, nothing unusual there. I encourage you to clap the rhythm through first with the appropriate hand. Notice that we've got slurs telling us to play smooth. We've got those repeat signs and we've got dynamics. We're gonna to continue to work on getting loud and soft sounds and differences. In this section of pieces, what is different is that you've got some pieces where your hands are playing, excuse me, playing together a lot. So let's take a look at a conversation. I wanna look at this one in a little closer detail. When you are looking at a piece where your hands are playing together, the first thing I want you to look for is if your hands are going in parallel or a contrary motion, because that's gonna help you cut back on your reading and be able to just go by how those hands are acting or interacting with each other. So if I look at this one, I'm not even worrying about note names right now. I see G, up uh, or down, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. If I look at the left hand, it is doing the exact same pattern. That makes me really happy because that's going to make life a lot easier. I would still go through practice reading your note names, B, A, B, A, G, A, your rhythm, your motion, your intervals, all that, because it's great reading. But the nice part is when you get to the point where you're putting your hands together, let's line this up. I'm gonna have a finger five on G, above middle C, one finger on every key. My left hand is my thumb on B, one finger on every key. Now, I'm gonna look at that starting note, five in my right, thumb in my left. 
because I know it's parallel motion or the hands are going the same direction, I only need to watch that top line. Think about the motion, say the motion, and the left hand just kind of comes along for the ride. So I have one and five, step down, step up. Down, down, up. Up, down, down, up, up. That next line is going to do the exact same thing. Do you see how that makes life a lot easier? When you're on page 21, I encourage you to look at walking song. Don't worry too much about waltz. That has some concepts that I really think come about next week. They'll make more sense. But do look at walking song. Nothing unusual there. When you turn the page in harmony, same thing. Yes, the hands are playing together through the whole piece. But do you see how they are in parallel motion? So again, not as difficult as what it looks. The only spot that's going to be different is right here where that left hand's going to have to do a skip down. Skipping up, skipping down, they've got it in the title. F, skip, skip. D, skip, skip. You can see how it's all based on skipping movement. I get to the end where my hands are together. C, skip down, skip down, skip up. This right hand is A, skip down, skip down, skip up. So again, it's parallel motion. When I'm looking at practicing a song, and we'll practice this way with our time together this week, I would start right here with the trickiest part. I would read A, skip, skip up, C, skip, skip, A. Maybe I might even figure out what my finger number is. And remember I said putting a finger number here or there like that's a good crutch. What we don't want to do is write it underneath every one. And then I would line that up, five on A, thumb on C, and now I'm gonna practice that skipping parallel motion. Skip down, skip down, skip up. Maybe I wanna practice it on a non-plane surface first. Coordination can be hard. Once I get it going here, it'll be easier to put it on those notes. Mostly fourths we get a chance to play some harmonic intervals, what we just talked about on the board, all together. When you play harmonic intervals all together, it's getting us ready for chords, I want you to listen carefully that all the notes are speaking together. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna line myself up here. First, I would tap my rhythm, then I would F, B, F, go through and name my note names. Then I'm gonna go back and practice intervals because that's a good way to train our eyes. F up a fourth, down a fourth. G down a fourth, up a fourth. F up a fourth, D up a fourth, and then I'm taking these fourths, I can see it's the same pitches, playing them all together. Lining myself up, five on F, five on G. Here's that first line, F, up a fourth means I'm covering four fingers. Back down. Right hand. G, down a fourth, back up. Left hand. Up a fourth. Right hand on that D, up a fourth. Here's those intervals of four harmonic. So you get a nice little chord there. Listen to a poor execution. You hear how that didn't speak all together. That means that my hand's too flat and those longer fingers are coming down first. So that's why it's important to have that curved hand position. As we curve our hand, we're making those fingers all the same length. Mostly fifths, you can guess it from the title, concentrating on intervals of five. Take a look at the ending here. Here's a spot where instead of having parallel motion, we have contrary. So when I get to that end, I'm on that last note, I'm actually stepping in towards each other. So that's a good spot to practice. Now your main focus for the week, of course, will be your weekly grade of Latin beat. And here's where we're putting a lot of ideas that we've taken all together. This is our first really long piece. When you set out to practice a long piece, the first thing I want you to do is to look through the lines and see if any of the lines are the same.
because you actually want to take the piece apart. You don't need to learn it from top to bottom. In fact, most of the time it's more efficient and effective to break it up into like sections. If you're practicing like sections one after another, high repetition is going to create better muscle memory. So I'm gonna start with my first line. I even like to label them. I'm gonna call this line A. So I would tap my rhythm. I would say my letter names. I would finger through it and then I would find my position. Once I have that line down, I'm gonna take a look and see if I have that similar material again. Is this line similar? No, so I'm gonna call that B. How about this line? That looks familiar, doesn't it? We've got a little bit something different there, but that would be like my A line again. So after I've practiced line one, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna actually practice line three because it's reinforcing what I just learned. So I would play that line again, leaving out that left hand. go back and add what's different about this line. So I have an E. Notice it's right on top here, so they need to strike together. Then I've got a four in the left, two in the right. Then I go on. And then I probably would practice those two A lines, one after another, several times in a row. That might be the end of my practicing for the day. High repetition yields muscle memory. When you're ready to move on to that B line, then I'm gonna go back up to that second line. We've got a lot of coordination here, so I probably would take one hand at a time. Reading through my right hand, reading the note names, fingering through it. Then I would read through my left hand, finger through it, look at the intervals then slowly put it together, but only after you've done each hand separately for two or three times. When you put it together, notice that the left hand has whole notes. So it needs to hold underneath that entire measure. And here's a whole note in the right hand that needs to hold through that entire measure. Once I've got that line learned, then you could go back, put those first three lines together. Then comes time to add that last line. Well, we're in luck. These first two measures you've already learned up here. The only thing that's different is the last two measures. Now, I need to point out to you right here. Take a look at your book. You have a wrong finger number there. Yours says one. Make sure you change it to a three. That makes a lot more sense. Three should be on G. Three has been on G throughout the entire piece. So now, Look at your coordination. We have finger threes together. I would just not care about that note for right now. Look at the big note. We're gonna step down and we're gonna step down. So again, I'm thinking about how those hands interact with each other. So here's my position again. Thumbs are neighbors on this piece. So I finger threes. I'm skipping that second quarter for right now so I can feel the parallel motion going down. One more time, finger threes, stepping down, stepping down. Okay, now let's add in that three, skip up to finger two, and then we have our parallel down. Threes, skip down. I have to go up in my right, down in my left, so that's gonna turn that into a contrary, and then a parallel. So when we add in this note, that. We've talked a lot about good crutches and bad crutches. I love arrows, showing arrows that are split or like we were doing back on the previous page, an arrow going down. Those are much better ideas and you're gonna see them and recognize what to do a lot faster than if you had C-A-F, A-F-D letter names written in. Arrows are great. If you're playing a piece and you keep missing it as a step or skip, you keep missing the interval, come up with a system. Maybe you're always gonna draw a line if it's a second or a circle if it's a third or bracket if it's a fourth. Come up with some system that you recognize. Again, those types of 
markings are going to be faster and more identifiable to you than trying to figure out if your finger numbers, where they are, what your note names are, if your hand's in the right spot. So not as many pieces to do for today or for this week. Um, Latin beat is a really fun one. That's where we'll spend the majority of our in-class time is on Latin beat, but I'll also touch on the coordination on the other pieces. So as you work, make a list. Those pieces that are struggling with co coordination, they don't sound correct, or you're just not sure if you're doing it right, make yourself a list so that on your classroom day, when I ask what you'd like to work on, you've got your ideas ready to go of what you need help with. Please also remember that you don't have to wait for your classroom day. If you'd like to get together, give a shout out. I'd be happy to have you come to my office and do some practicing together. Be happy to meet you virtually if you're more comfortable with that. So pages 20 through 24, Latin Beat is the weekly grade for week three. You can upload it to Canvas or you can make an appointment to come play it for me live. I hope you enjoy these pieces and have fun.